driving alone on a desolate highway through dense fog, Michael felt a sense of unease. His car, a reliable old sedan, began to emit strange noises. The dashboard lights flickering erratically. Suddenly, with a final shudder, the engine died, leaving him stranded in the middle of nowhere, the surrounding mist obscuring everything beyond a few feet. With no cell signal and the nearest town miles away, Michael decided to wait for daylight. As the night deepened, the fog thickened, and an oppressive silence enveloped the car. The darkness outside seemed alive, pressing against the windows with almost tangible curiosity. Hours passed, and Michael started to hear faint whispers and soft, irregular footsteps circling the car initially dismissing them as products of his imagination. He soon realized they were growing louder, more insistent, peering through the fogged windows. He could see fleeting shadows moving just beyond the reach of the car's dim headlights. The situation escalated when he heard a gentle tapping on the window beside him. Turning slowly, he saw, or thought he saw, a face in the mist, a pale, distorted visage with hollow eyes, staring intently at him. Panicking, he tried the engine again, but it remained lifeless, as if drained of all power. The tapping grew into a persistent knocking, now joined by similar sounds from all sides of the car, as if multiple unseen entities were closing in. Michael felt an overwhelming sense of dread, the air in the car growing colder, the edges of his vision starting to blur. In a desperate attempt to escape, he decided to run to the safety of the trunk, where he remembered seeing a flare gun earlier, fumbling in the dark, with the knocking growing more frenetic. He managed to crawl into the back seat, and then into the trunk. His breaths, short and ragged with fear. Just as he reached for the flare gun, the car began to shake violently, as though hands were clawing at the exterior, trying to break through. Michael, now armed with the flare gun, hesitated, knowing that leaving the relative safety of the trunk could be a fatal mistake but staying there seemed equally perilous. As the car continued to rock and the sounds outside grew more hostile, as he mustered the courage to confront whatever lay outside, the car suddenly fell still, the silence returning with an eerie suddenness. The fog outside began to glow with a faint, unnatural light, and a deep, resonant hum filled the air vibrating through the metal of the car. Michael, clutching the flare gun, braced himself to open the trunk, to face the unknown horrors that awaited in the mist. The last thing he saw before stepping out into the fog was the outline of a massive, indistinct shape moving towards the car. Its form obscured, but its presence unmistakable and terrifying. Michael's heart pounded as he cautiously opened the trunk, the cold mist swirling around him. The fog was so thick, it felt almost solid, muffling sounds and creating an otherworldly silence. Clutching the flare gun, he stepped out, his feet finding the soft, unstable ground beside the road. The mist seemed to retreat slightly as if inviting him to venture further. He could no longer see the car behind him. It was as if it had been swallowed by the fog. Ahead, the faint, unnatural light he had seen from the trunk beckoned him forward, its source obscured by the dense mist. Each step felt like a descent into a deeper unknown. The ground beneath his feet 
whispering with hidden life. The hum that had filled the air became a melody, haunting and seductive, pulling Michael towards a destination unseen. Shapes moved in the periphery of his vision, humanoid but distorted, elongating and shrinking as if the mist played with their forms. Whispers filled his ears, voices speaking in a language he couldn't understand, yet carrying an unmistakable warning. As he moved forward, the ground began to rise, leading him to a hill he was certain hadn't been there before. The top of the hill was clearer, the fog thinning to reveal a circle of ancient stones, their origins lost to time, standing as silent sentinels. In the center of the circle, the light coalesced into a glowing orb, pulsating softly, in sync with the eerie melody that permeated the air. Michael, drawn to the orb, felt its pull on his very being, a connection that seemed to bridge the gap between his mind and the unknown forces surrounding him. As he approached, the stones around him seemed to come alive, their surfaces crawling with faint, luminescent symbols, a language of the mist. Suddenly, the whispers grew into a cacophony of voices, and the orb's light intensified, casting long, twisted shadows that writhed across the ground like living things. Michael realized that the orb and the stones were part of something much larger, a ritual or gateway that had been activated by his presence. The melody turned into a dirge, a mournful lament that seemed to echo through the ages, telling stories of lost civilizations and forgotten horrors. The ground shook, and the air around him thickened, as if reality itself was being twisted by the forces summoned in this ancient place. From the mist, figures began to emerge, their forms more defined, but no less terrifying, a procession of beings that were once human. Their features now merged with the fog, eyes glowing with a malevolent light. They moved towards the stone circle, their attention focused on Michael, as if he were an intruder in a sacred rite that had been disturbed. Trapped in the circle, Michael realized that the breakdown of his car had not been an accident, but a lure, drawing him into a world that lay hidden beneath the veil of the mist. The flare gun in his hand felt insignificant against the unfolding nightmare. It was all he had to defend himself. As the figures closed in, the orb pulsed faster, its light now blinding, casting the stone circle in stark, unnatural relief. The ground within the circle began to crack, the air vibrating with power as the boundary between worlds thinned, threatening to unleash the horror that lay beyond. Michael, standing at the heart of the circle, faced the approaching figures and the glowing orb, caught in the climax of an ancient and horrific drama that had chosen him as its central player. The mist, the stones, and the unearthly light all converged on him, setting the stage for a confrontation that would decide not only his fate, but perhaps the boundary between the known world and the terrors that lurk in the shadows of reality. As the spectral figures converged on the stone circle, their forms became more distinct, revealing their tortured, twisted visages, products of an ancient curse or ritual gone awry. Michael, trapped within the circle, felt the weight of centuries bearing down on him, the air thick with the scent of decay and the echo 
of endless sorrow. The orb, now pulsating at a frantic pace, seemed to be the catalyst for the unfolding events. Its light casting an otherworldly glow on the stones, which now throbbed with the same rhythm, their symbols glowing fiercely. The ground beneath Michael's feet cracked further, the fissures spreading like a web, glowing with the same eerie luminescence as the orb and the stones. In the midst of this chaos, a larger shape began to materialize from the mist, its form massive and imposing, looming over the stone circle. This new entity, part of the ancient ritual, and bound to the fate of the circle, exuded a presence so overwhelming that even the twisted figures halted their advance, bowing in reverence or fear. Michael, realizing the significance of the moment, aimed the flare gun at the orb, intuiting that it was the source of the power that fueled the ritual and the entity's emergence. As he hesitated, Torn between the urge to flee and the need to end the nightmare, the entity's form became clearer, revealing a creature of mythic proportions. Its features, a terrifying amalgamation of human and otherworldly characteristics. The creature spoke in a voice that resonated through the ground and the air, a deep, sonorous sound that seemed to come from the very earth itself. Its words, though spoken in an unknown language, filled Michael's mind with images of ancient rites, forgotten sacrifices, and the cyclical nature of time and destiny, hinting at the creature's eternal guardianship over the threshold between worlds. As the creature's gaze fixed on Michael, the orb erupted in a blinding flash, momentarily illuminating the landscape and revealing the true extent of the ritual site. A vast, ancient complex hidden by the mist and time, stretching far beyond the stone circle. Driven by a newfound resolve, Michael fired the flare gun at the orb. The flare, trailing fire and smoke, struck the orb, causing a cataclysmic reaction. The explosion of light and energy sent shockwaves through the area, disrupting the ritual and the creature's emergence. The spectral figures screamed in agony, or maybe relief, as they were consumed by the light. Their existence tied to the ritual that had ensnared them, the stones cracked and crumbled, their destruction severing the ties that bound the creature to the physical world, sending it back into the abyss from which it had been summoned. The mist began to dissipate, revealing the pre-dawn sky, the first light of morning casting the ruins of the stone circle in stark relief against the dark earth. Michael, exhausted and disoriented, stumbled through the wreckage of the ritual site. The events that had transpired seeming more like fragments of a nightmare than reality. As he walked away from the remains of the stone circle, the sun rose, casting long shadows across the land that had been hidden by the mist. In the light of day, the horror of the night seemed distant, but the echoes of the whispers and the creature's voice lingered in Michael's mind, a reminder of the thin veil between the known world and the ancient mysteries that lurk in the shadows. Michael's journey back to the road was a silent one, his mind grappling with the night's terrifying events and the reality-shattering revelations they brought. The world he returned to was the same, yet far
forever altered in his eyes, now aware of the deeper, darker truths that underpin the fabric of existence. The story of Michael's horrific car breakdown and the subsequent encounter with the ancient and otherworldly forces would become a tale of survival and revelation, a chilling reminder of the mysteries and horrors that lie just beyond the veil of the everyday world, waiting in the mist for the unwary to stumble upon. Emerging from the remnants of the ancient site, Michael felt a profound change within himself. The encounter with the creature and the destruction of the ritual had left an indelible mark on his psyche. He was no longer just a passive observer of the world, but now a participant in its hidden, mystical layers. As he made his way back to the highway, the sun fully rose, casting light on the path he walked. The world around him seemed normal. The road quiet and peaceful in the early morning light. But the normalcy was a thin veneer over the lingering sense of otherworldliness that clung to his clothes like the remnants of the mist. Upon reaching the spot where his car had broken down, he found it oddly intact, as if untouched by the night's events. The vehicle started without hesitation, the engine purring smoothly, contrasting starkly with its previous unresponsive state. Michael drove off, glancing in the rearview mirror at the now clear area where the stone circle had stood, the events already taking on the quality of a distant dream. But the ordeal was far from over. In the days that followed, Michael experienced strange occurrences, shadows flickering at the edge of his vision, unexplained whispers in empty rooms, and a persistent feeling of being watched the boundaries between his everyday reality and the world he encountered that night became increasingly blurred. Determined to understand his experiences, Michael began researching the ancient rituals and the myths surrounding the creatures like the one he had encountered. His search led him to historical records of similar occurrences, accounts of people vanishing or experiencing time slips and ancient sites with reputations for strange, unexplained phenomena. He also started noticing patterns in the world around him, alignments and anomalies that seemed to hint at a larger, hidden design. The fabric of reality appeared to be threaded with invisible lines of power and significance, connecting the mundane to the mystical the earthly to the otherworldly, compelled by a need for answers and a desire to confront the lingering presence of the watcher-like entity, Michael set out on a journey that would take him to other ancient sites, places where the veil between worlds was thin and where he could find the keys to unlock the mysteries he had uncovered. Each site brought new challenges and revelations, drawing him deeper into a world of ancient powers and cosmic balances. He encountered other beings, some benign, others malevolent, entities that dwelt in the spaces between, their motives and purposes as varied as their forms. As Michael traversed this hidden world, his actions began to attract attention, not just from the entities he encountered, but from other humans who had touched the fringes of this reality. Some sought to aid him in his quest, while others, aware of the power and knowledge that could be gained, aimed to harness the forces Michael had unwittingly unleashed. The journey transformed into a quest not just for understanding, 
but for control over the powers that govern the thin places where realities converge. Michael found himself at the center of a web of intrigue and cosmic struggle. A key player in a game whose stakes were the very nature of reality itself. Emerging from the remnants of the ancient site, Michael felt a profound change within himself. The encounter with the creature and the destruction of the ritual had left an indelible mark on his psyche. He was no longer just a passive observer of the world, but now a participant in its hidden mystical layers. As he made his way back to the highway, the sun fully rose, casting light on the path he walked. The world around him seemed normal. The road quiet and peaceful in the early morning light. But the normalcy was a thin veneer over the lingering sense of otherworldliness that clung to his clothes like the remnants of the mist. Upon reaching the spot where his car had broken down, he found it oddly intact, as if untouched by the night's events. The vehicle started without hesitation, the engine purring smoothly, contrasting starkly with its previous unresponsive state. Michael drove off, glancing in the rearview mirror at the now clear area where the stone circle had stood. The events already taking on the quality of a distant dream. But the ordeal was far from over. In the days that followed, Michael experienced strange occurrences, shadows flickering at the edge of his vision, unexplained whispers in empty rooms, and a persistent feeling of being watched. The boundaries between his everyday reality and the world he encountered that night became increasingly blurred. Determined to understand his experiences, Michael began researching the ancient rituals and the myths surrounding the creatures, like the one he had encountered. His search led him to historical records of similar occurrences, accounts of people vanishing or experiencing time slips, and ancient sites with reputations for strange, unexplained phenomena. He also started noticing patterns in the world around him, alignments and anomalies that seemed to hint at a larger, hidden design. The fabric of reality appeared to be threaded with invisible lines of power and significance, connecting the mundane to the mystical, the earthly to the otherworldly. Compelled by a need for answers and a desire to confront the lingering presence of the watcher-like entity, Michael set out on a journey that would take him to other ancient sites, places where the veil between worlds was thin and where he could find the keys to unlock the mysteries he had uncovered. Each site brought new challenges and revelations, drawing him deeper into a world of ancient powers and cosmic balances. He encountered other beings some benign, others malevolent, entities that dwelt in the spaces between, their motives and purposes as varied as their forms. As Michael traversed this hidden world, his actions began to attract attention, not just from the entities he encountered, but from other humans who had touched the fringes of this reality. Some sought to aid him in his quest, while others, aware of the power and knowledge that could be gained, aimed to harness the forces Michael had unwittingly unleashed. The journey transformed into a quest, not just for understanding, but for control over the powers that govern the thin places where realities converge. Michael found himself at the center of a web of intrigue and cosmic struggle, a key player in a game whose stakes were the very nature of reality 
itself. His experiences and the knowledge he gained made him a beacon for the forces of both light and darkness. Each drawn to the power he represented, the initial horrific car breakdown was merely the beginning of a saga that spanned the hidden depths of the world. A tale of discovery, power, and the eternal dance between the seen and the unseen, the known and the unknowable. Michael's journey led him deeper into the labyrinth of ancient mysteries and modern enigmas, where each discovery unraveled more of the intricate tapestry that connected his fate to the cosmic equilibrium. His encounters with the entities and the sights of power taught him the delicate art of navigating the unseen currents that influenced the material world. As he traveled, Michael's reputation grew, attracting a following of those who had experienced similar brushes with the otherworldly. Together, they formed a network of seekers, each bringing their own pieces of the puzzle to the collective understanding of the hidden reality that underpinned their world. However, with increased knowledge came increased danger. The entities that watched from the shadows, whose interests were threatened by Michael's discoveries, began to act weaving their own plots to counter his efforts. They sought to manipulate the ley lines of power, to tilt the cosmic balance in their favor, and to seal the thin places that Michael aimed to protect. Michael and his followers uncovered ancient prophecies that spoke of a convergence, a moment when the barriers between worlds would thin to breaking point allowing the entities to invade and claim dominion over the Earth. This looming threat became the driving force behind Michael's quest. As he sought to gather the knowledge and allies needed to prevent the convergence and preserve the balance between the worlds, his travels took him to remote corners of the Earth, to hidden temples and forgotten cities, where he uncovered relics and writings that held the secrets to the ancient guardianship of the thin places. He learned of the original pact made between the human realm and the entities, a pact that had been fractured and forgotten over the millennia, leading to the current instability. In his pursuit of knowledge, Michael delved into the forbidden arts learning to harness the energies of the thin places, to shape and direct the flows of power. This mastery came at a cost, drawing the ire of both the entities and rival human factions who sought to control the ancient sites for their own purposes. Each step forward was countered by challenges, both mystical and mundane from ethereal beings that defied the laws of physics to human adversaries well-versed in the arcane. Michael's path was fraught with trials that tested his resolve, his sanity, and his understanding of the very nature of existence. Amidst this cosmic struggle, Michael discovered that the key to preventing the convergence lay in re-establishing the ancient pact, a task that required uniting the scattered guardians of the thin places and restoring the sacred sites that had been desecrated or forgotten. The narrative of Michael's quest became a tapestry of interwoven threads, each strand representing a part of the greater whole that he sought to understand and protect. His story, a blend of myth and reality, history and prophecy, became a beacon for those who sensed the deeper currents of the world, drawing together a coalition of allies, human 
and otherwise, to stand against the coming storm. As the time of the convergence approached, the world grew stranger. The boundaries between the ordinary and the extraordinary blurring, as the ancient sights awakened, resonating with the power of the rekindled packs and the renewed guardianship, Michael, at the heart of this awakening, stood on the threshold of a revelation that would illuminate the path to salvation or lead to the descent into chaos. The final act of his journey, balancing on the knife edge of cosmic fate. As the convergence neared, the world trembled on the brink of a new reality. The ancient sights, now reactivated by Michael and his allies, pulsed with energy, creating a network of beacons that resisted the encroaching darkness. The fabric of reality stretched thin, allowing glimpses of other dimensions, where the entities lay in wait, their eyes fixed on the earthly realm. Michael, now a figure of legend, led his coalition in a series of rituals designed to strengthen the barriers between worlds and to anchor the human realm in its rightful place within the cosmic tapestry. Each ritual was a gamble, a delicate operation that required precision and harmony among the diverse forces and allies he had united. The entities, aware of Michael's efforts, launched their own assaults both in the physical world and in the spiritual plane. Shadowy figures infiltrated the coalition, sowing discord and betrayal, while ethereal storms raged over the ancient sites, attempting to disrupt the rituals and weaken the barriers. In this escalating conflict, Michael realized that the key to victory lay not in direct confrontation, but in understanding the true nature of the pact and the role of humanity in the cosmic balance. He sought wisdom in the hidden archives of the world, in the forgotten lore of the guardians, and in the whispered secrets of the entities themselves, who, despite their opposition, held respect for his tenacity and understanding. The culmination of his quest led him to a forgotten sanctuary, a place where the first pact had been made, a site older than any known civilization. Here, the core of the Earth's connection to the cosmos lay hidden, protected by riddles and guardians, both physical and spectral. As Michael and his team navigated the challenges of the sanctuary, the world outside teetered on the edge of transformation. The ancient sites flared with power, casting a protective web over the planet, while the entities marshaled their forces for a final push, their efforts creating natural and supernatural disasters that threatened to unravel the fabric of society. Inside the sanctuary, Michael discovered the original tablets of the pact, their inscriptions revealing the forgotten history of humanity's interaction with the cosmic entities and the true stakes of the convergence. The tablets offered not only the knowledge to restore the pact, but also the revelation of humanity's potential to transcend its earthly confines and to become true stewards of the cosmic balance. With the convergence imminent, the coalition faced the ultimate test. The rituals began, a synchronized global effort that harnessed the energies of the ancient sites, the will of the guardians, and the collective spirit of humanity. The sanctuary as the epicenter channeled this vast energy, with Michael at its heart, guiding the flow and shaping the destiny of the world. The battle that ensued 
was not just of physical might, but of wills and beliefs. A clash of ideals and destinies, where every soul on earth played a part. The entities, ancient and powerful, unleashed their full might, their forms bleeding into the earthly realm, casting shadows over the land. But they were met with the united front of humanity, empowered by the guardians and led by Michael, their combined strength, a beacon of light in the darkness. As the two forces collided, the sanctuary glowed with a celestial light, the tablets resonating with the energies of the earth and the cosmos, a symphony of power that sought to rewrite the rules of reality and to redefine the relationship between the earthly and the divine. In this crucible of cosmic forces, Michael stood as a mediator, a bridge between the human and the ethereal, his actions echoing through the ages, shaping the outcome of the convergence and the future of all existence. In the climactic moments of the convergence, the sanctuary's light reached its zenith, piercing the veil between worlds and illuminating the true nature of the cosmos. Michael, at the center of this maelstrom of energy, channeled the collective will of humanity and the ancient power of the guardians, directing it against the tide of entities threatening to overwhelm the world. As the two forces met, reality itself buckled and twisted, creating a spectacle of light and shadow, sound and silence that spanned the physical and spiritual planes. The entities, vast and terrible in their might, clashed with the surge of human resilience and guardian strength, their forms dissolving and reshaping in the intense light of the sanctuary. In these final moments, Michael understood the essence of the pact. It was not a mere truce or a binding contract, but a mutual recognition of roles in the great tapestry of existence. Humanity and the entities were not enemies, but counterbalances, each essential to the maintenance of cosmic order. With this revelation, Michael guided the ritual to its completion. The ancient tablets radiating a profound energy that infused the very fabric of reality, sealing the thin places and reinforcing the boundaries between worlds. The entities, recognizing the renewal of the pact, ceased their assault, their forms retreating from the earthly realm, not in defeat, but in acknowledgement of the restored balance. The world quieted, the storms abated, and the ancient sights dimmed, their task completed. Humanity, having stood on the brink of annihilation, found itself not just preserved, but elevated, now aware of its place and responsibility within the wider cosmos. Michael, his role as mediator fulfilled, emerged from the sanctuary, forever changed. He had faced the horrors of the unknown and the awe of revelation, becoming a legend, not only in the annals of the hidden world, but also in the collective memory of humanity. The aftermath of the convergence saw a new dawn for the world, the ancient sites became places of pilgrimage where people could connect with the guardians and the energies of the cosmos. The entities, no longer shadows in the mist, but recognized forces of the universe, interacted with humanity through the thin places, maintaining the balance under the terms of the renewed pact. 
Michael's journey from a horrific car breakdown to the heart of cosmic mysteries became a tale told through generations, a story of courage, discovery, and the unbreakable will to survive and understand. His legacy lived on in the guardianship of the Thin Places, in the coalition he formed, and in the newfound harmony between the earthly and the divine. In this new era, the horrors of the past became lessons for the future, and the fear of the unknown transformed into a quest for knowledge and understanding. Humanity, once isolated and ignorant of the broader cosmos, now walked hand in hand with the entities, guardians of the balance, stewards of the thin places, and participants in the great ongoing story of existence.